November 17th, 2020, Origin Protocol posts this tweet. OUSD has been hacked. The team is all hands on deck, attempting to figure out what vulnerability was exploited and how the hacker was able to access users' deposits. Now, it didn't take them long to figure out the origin of the exploit was the same one driving four other attacks on Acropolis, Harvest, Value, and Cheese Bank. And it is fascinating. Because it's all about doing things very, very fast. See, the origin of all these attacks was a flash loan, allowing the attacker to borrow huge collateral at zero risk, temporarily granting them the heft of a whale and the power to drain protocols in a matter of minutes using re-entrancy vulnerabilities. And we're not talking peanuts here. $45 million in the last month alone. Ah! That is a lot. And I hope you brought a shovel and some wellies because, yeah, we're going deep. This is the Defiant. Okay, so there have been five attacks, and I thought it might be worth going into them in some detail to gain some insight. So, Cheese Bank, an autonomous digital bank based on a decentralized protocol, was drained of $3.3 million worth of USDC, USDT, and DAI by a hacker exploiting a bug in the way it measured asset price from an AMM-based oracle. On their website, they say that they successfully passed the slow mist smart contract security audit. Then there's Acropolis, a decentralized finance protocol with products geared towards borrowing, lending, and yield farming. And they had their Delphi pool relieved of 2,030,850 DAI using a re-entrance attack with a DIDX flash loan. And the attacker used his own contract as the deposit token. Now they had their smart contracts audited by SmartDeck and Certic. Now the largest single exploit occurred on yield farming protocol Harvest, where the hacker got away with $24 million, but then mysteriously returned $2.5 million. And this was done via arbitrage manipulation using a $50 million flash loan, which enabled the attackers to severely stretch the price of that stablecoin on Curve's Y pool. And it took them less than seven minutes to escape with, I'm gonna say it again, $24 million. And the total volume of trading on Curve's USDT and USDC shot from $10 million to over $2.7 billion during the exploit. And their smart contracts were audited by HE Audit. Next up was the value DeFi protocol, which was unburdened to the delightfully musical tune of $6 million. And more on that one later as it's, well, it's kind of a masterpiece. Their contracts were audited by Pessimistic and Arcadia Group, and there is a quant stamp audit pending, but I was unable to find it. And finally, Origin Protocol. They found themselves clutching at fresh air as $7 million worth of tokens were extracted from their coffers. And the attacker there exploited a missing validation check in Mint Multiple to pass in a fake stablecoin which was under their control. And that allowed the hacker to exploit the contract with, yes again, a re-entrancy attack in the middle of the Mint. And in the introductory Medium post, they do say that they will be providing the results of their smart contract audits, but so far I haven't found any, and that origin dollar is actually a pretty recent entry into the market. Now the specifics of these attacks vary, but every single one of them began the same way with a flash loan. So I know what you're wondering, what the hell even is a flash loan? A flash loan is a loan that is only valid within one blockchain transaction. And flash loans fail if the borrower does not repay his debt before the end of the transaction borrowing the loan. And this is possible because a blockchain transaction can be reverted during its execution if the condition of a repayment is not satisfied. Now the assets for the flash loan are taken from a publicly funded smart contract pool. And the biggest flash loan pools right now are provided by Ava and Didex. But you can also create flash swaps on Uniswap. Now, the concept of a flash loan originates with Max Wolf, the creator of Marble Protocol, back in the dark months of 2018. Now, Marble styled itself as a smart contract bank, and its killer product was a profound DeFi innovation. Zero risk loans via a smart contract. Zero risk? 
Now that's radical, and it also seems impossible, right? And if we look at regular old normal banking, traditional lenders, well, they take on two forms of risk. The first is default risk. If the borrower runs off with the money, then they have to try and get it back or write it off, but that's kind of written into the terms of the loan. The second form of risk to a lender is illiquidity risk. If a lender loans out too many of their assets at the wrong times or doesn't receive timely payments, then they can find themselves unexpectedly illiquid and not able to meet their own obligations. Flash loans mitigate both these risks, and it works like this. I, the lender, say to you, the borrower, I can lend you as much money as you want, but only for this single transaction. By the end of this transaction, you must pay me at least as much as I lent you, but if you're unable to do that, I will automatically roll back the transaction so that it never happened. And that means flash loans represent zero risk and zero opportunity cost. This is because the borrower essentially froze time for the duration of their flash loan. So as far as anyone else auditing the ledger knows, the system's capital was never at risk and never encumbered. Therefore, it could not have earned interest elsewhere. It didn't actually happen unless it happened. But then if it did happen, it never happened because it already happened and it's done. Wow. Flash loans were originally sold as arbitrage superpowers. And here's Marble's original marketing statement. With flash lending, a trader can borrow from the Marble Bank, buy a token on one DEX, sell the token on another DEX for a higher price, repay the bank, and pocket the arbitrage profit all in a single atomic transaction. In reality, though, arbitrage is normally performed by highly competitive arbitrageurs using cutting-edge bots. There are other uses for flash loans, though, like seamless collateral swaps, but of late, they've mostly been used to power, yes, flash attacks. And that brings up one more important point. Traditionally, tremendous amounts of cryptocurrency were needed by individuals or groups that wanted to manipulate the market. But with flash loans, anyone can become a whale for a few seconds. Well, I say anyone, but if you go on Ava's website, for instance, and you start looking for the flash loan button, you won't find it. And I actually wanted to do a flash loan for this film, a live one, and I found my way into Ava's super helpful documentation where I was confronted with this. Flash loans are an advanced concept aimed at developers. You must have a good understanding of Ethereum programming and smart contracts to take advantage of them. Well, I don't have any of those things. So, I don't get to be a whale. Not today. Damn it! PeckShield, the blockchain security firm, well, they wrote a report on the Cheese Bank exploit and cited the other incidents as well, saying, in the string of attacks, we have seen malicious actors use flash loans to instantaneously borrow, swap, deposit, and again borrow large numbers of tokens so that they can artificially manipulate the price of a specific token on a single exchange like Uniswap or Curve. And they go on to say, this sequence is essentially the foot in the door, allowing the attacker to then exploit that exchange's anomalous pricing. And this really gets to the heart of how these exploits can be so devastating in what's known as price oracle attacks. So what's really important to bear in mind here is that the flash loan only provides the funding to execute an attack. The flash loan itself is not the cause of the attack. Where the vulnerability actually lies is in the centralized oracles, i.e. using a single DEX as the protocol's sole price oracle. And here's how that looks when an attack occurs. So firstly, what you're gonna do is borrow a large amount of token A from a protocol supporting flash loans. Next, you're gonna swap token A for token B on a DEX which lowers the price of token A and increases the price of token B on the DEX. Then you're gonna deposit the purchased token B as collateral on a DeFi protocol that uses that very same DEX as its sole price feed. And then you're gonna use that manipulated pricing to borrow a larger amount of token A than should normally be possible. You're then gonna use a portion of that borrowed token A to fully pay back the original flash loan and keep the remaining tokens, generating a profit from the protocol's manipulated price feed. Now, as the prices of token A and B on the DEX are arbitraged back to the true market-wide price, the DeFi protocol itself is left with an under-collateralized position with debt worth more than the collateral, which directly harms the innocent 
users. Now, because the attacker was able to open a flash stone and manipulate the on-chain exchange that a DeFi protocol used as its sole price oracle, they were able to raise the reported value of the token used as collateral and lower the reported value of the token used as debt and make themselves a fat stack of cash. Sounds complicated? It really isn't. Now, earlier I talked about re-entrancy, and if you cast your mind back to May 2016, this was the very same attack that was used to hack the DAO, draining it of 3.6 million ether, wrecked, absolutely taken down, and bringing about that very famous contentious hard fork. Now, the DAO itself had a vulnerable function meant to split off a child DAO, and the attacker used this function to recursively transfer funds from the original DAO to the child DAO that they controlled. Now, a re-entrancy attack can occur when you create a function that makes an external call to another untrusted contract before it resolves any effects. Now, if the attacker can control that untrusted contract, they can make a recursive call back to the original function, repeating interactions that would otherwise not run after the effects were resolved. Still with me? The simplest example is when a contract does internal accounting with a balance variable and exposes a withdraw function. If the vulnerable contract transfers funds before it sets the balance to zero, the attacker can recursively call the withdrawal function repeatedly and drain the whole contract. And this is basically what happened with Acropolis. Wow, what do you say after that one? But of all the hacks this last month, the one that really stands out is this one. On their website, Value states that their mission is to bring fairness, true value, and innovation to DeFi. And one of their four pillars is to protect community funds and provide peace of mind. Hmm. Now, the background to all this was that the project itself had made a huge point of broadcasting how resistant their protocol was to flash loans in a series of tweets that have now all been deleted. Hindsight's a bitch. Value's flagship product, the Multi-Stables Vault, was supposed to have the following advantages. One, flash loan attack prevention. Two, fake token attack prevention. Three, re-entrance attack prevention. But it turned out to have none of those at all. And as Stanny from Ava neatly put it, building resilient DeFi is becoming difficult. Becoming? I think we can safely say it already is. But what really struck me when researching this film was the comments. Just good, those things happen. Art, like someone said. I have to admire the intelligence, creativity, and complexity. Paraswap called it a mind-blowing hack. And it reminded me of a Medium post that Hasib Qureshi wrote back in February, which was entitled, Flash Loans, Why Flash Attacks Will Be the New Normal. And in it, he called two BZX hacks magnificent. Now, Paraswap included a blocksy visualization of the exploit, and I'm just going to leave it here with some cultured music for you to enjoy. And here was me thinking we've moved away from art after the videos of the last few weeks. So what was so artistic about it? Well, Emiliano Bonassi did a great job of explaining it in his Twitter thread, but the tilde is that it involved not one, but two flash loans, one on Ava and one on Uniswap. And he counted, wait for it, 16 individual steps that ended up with a cool $16 million in the attacker's pocket. Ready? <laughs> One, flash loan 80,000 ETH from Ava. Two, flash swap 160 million DAI from Uniswap. Three, swap 80,000 for 31 million USDT on Uniswap, effectively 76.6 thousand remaining 3.3 thousand ETH. Four, deposit 25 million DAI on Value Multi Vault Bank. Swap 91 million DAI to 90.2 million USDC on Curve. Six, swap 31 million USDT to 17 million USDC on Curve. Seven, withdraw 33 million 3 CRV from Value Multi Vault Bank. Eight, swap 17.3 million USDC to 30.9 USDT on Curve. Swap 90.2 million USDC to 90.9 million DAI on Curve. Remove liquidity with 33 million 3 CRV. That's the three pool on Curve for 33.1 million DAI on Curve. 11, swap. 30.9 USDT for 76,000 ETH on Uniswap. 12, pay back flash swap 160 million DAI to Uniswap. 13, swap 280,000 DAI to 606.9 ETH on SushiSwap. 14, pay back the flash loan 80.072K to other. 15, transfer 2 million DAI to the value deployer. 16, transfer 5.4 million DAI to the exploiter. All in one transaction, yes, that is 
badass. And that wasn't the end of it. Shortly after the exploit, the attacker followed up with an Ethereum transaction that seemed to taunt the value DeFi protocol with a message sent directly to the protocol's deployer address. And it said, do you really know Flash Loan? Wow, what do you say after that one? Brutal, savage, wrecked. Okay, so put yourself in the position of one of these teams. You've hustled, you've created that TVL, and now suddenly someone who might very well be smarter than you and sharper than you has made you look like a fool. But what do you do? Well, let's take a look. Harvest, who lost $24 million, put out a bounty of 100,000 to anyone who could return the funds. But they also said the following. But in their Discord, they raised the possibility that they knew who this person was. Now, I actually used the same tactic when trying to recover the ghost tokens that were taken from me, but it didn't work. And I suspect this won't work either. If you've gone to all that trouble, yeah, you're not gonna be pressured out of it that easily. So what about Acropolis? Well, they wrote an open letter to the hacker in which they offered a bug bounty of $200,000 to return the funds for finding the exploit. But there's an important question here over whether that actually sets a dangerous precedent that would encourage more hackers to follow suit in what would essentially amount to extortion. The Medium post has now been deleted. And what about value? Well, some of value's victims actually sent messages back to the hacker via their input data function. The messages were such as, my grandparents and my parents sent me their life savings for high yield return that I boasted about. And that one was apparently from a 19 year old student living in the United Kingdom who said he'd lost $200,000. He continues, I will be grateful if you can send the funds back and I return them to my family. You know what though? The hacker did actually send some die back to a small handful of those who'd sent those messages, but he also fired back another message. I don't expect to get your money, but as we've seen, there are so many people here who lack knowledge and caution, and sooner or later those money will be lost. Some wounds are painful, but very effective. Some wounds are painful, like that use of the English language. Oof. Now, Origin Protocol also offered a bounty, but this time for information. Matthew Liu, co-founder of Origin Protocol, responded to the attack saying, this is not a rug pull or internal scab. Despite this setback, it's very much in our intention to make OUSD a safe, secure, and successful product that builds on the broader origin mission of peer-to-peer -peer commerce. We are offering a bounty of one million US dollars to anyone that supplies substantial information or evidence leading to the return of customer funds. To the hacker, we believe you've made your point to us and our community. Deployers deploying untested contracts before essential security audits have been completed need to be more comprehensive and diligent when developing their products. So what about the fallout to all this? Well, let's take a look at the origin dollar, which is backed not by fiat, but by other stable coins. And the origin dollar should in theory be pegged to $1. So let's look how that was today. Wow, what do you say after that one? Brutal, savage, wrecked. Now there's one thing that always strikes me as odd about these exploits. Why do the hackers return the money? Or at least a little chunk of money? Are they hoping that that's enough to stop investigative teams from coming after them? Or is it just to prove a point? I don't know. And it turns out I'm not the only one who thinks it's odd. Now the truth is, a lot of what we see in the blockchain space is, well, how to be kind. It's a wazi, it's a woozy, it's a fairy dust. It doesn't exist, it's never landed, it is no matter. It's not on the elemental chart, it, it's not fucking real. So who knows what's really going on? And if I'm honest, I feel a little conflicted making this film. When commenters call these attacks art, is it really art? A man can be an artist. And anything, fool, whatever. It depends on how good he is at it. I mean, I don't know if you believe that a 19 year old was really given control of his parents and grandparents' savings, but I certainly don't. However, there definitely were victims in these flash attacks, people who actually lost money. And in my original script, I was ready to unleash on the hackers. This isn't art, it's theft, plain and simple. But I'm wrong. 
A few weeks back, I exposed my private keys and people took my tokens. And I argued at the time that the exposed keys entitled them to take a look, but the moment they took the tokens, well, that was stealing. But this is different, because the truth is, these flash attacks weren't hacks. The attackers exploited vulnerabilities, yes, but they did it perfectly within the rules of the game. In one article I read, hackers described as apex predators, and that seems a pretty much perfect name for them. So if you were the victim, then I'm afraid you probably just have to take your beats and move on. But there is a bigger question here. All of these projects, bar the origin dollar, have been audited by smart contract security firms. So what the fuck were they doing? And what are those reports worth now? Hmm. Anybody caught on the street with this will get killed. The takeout from all this is that if you leave the door open in crypto, someone is going to slide in and they will probably slit your throat. So think about that. And I'll see you on the next one. This was The Defiant. Stay safe out there. Flash gets rid of dirt and grime and grease in just a minute. Flash will clean your whole house and most things you'll find in it. Can it clean a bathroom sink? Quicker than a wind. Can it clean a window sash? Faster than a flash. Can it clean a dirty mirror? It'll make you bright and clearer. Can it clean a diamond ring? Flash cleans anything. Flash gets rid of dirt and grime and Flash, 50 years of shine and freshness.